Dear students, welcome to my channel, Learn to Live. In this video series, we will be discussing 8th Standard Science, chapter by chapter, based on NCERT or CBSE syllabus. In the previous video, we learned chapter 6, Combustion and Flame. Those who missed that chapter, please watch it. The links are given in the description. Chapter 7 Conservation of Plants and Animals We know, in the current world, many animals and plants are facing danger. Some of them will be extinct in some years from now. Some already extinct. It is our duty to preserve them for ourselves, as well as for the future generations. In this chapter, we will be learning about conservation of plants and animals, along with the issues they are facing. We will be learning the following topics in this chapter. Deforestation and its causes. Consequences of deforestation. Conservation of forest and wildlife. Biosphere reserve. Flora and fauna. Endemic species. Wildlife sanctuary. National park. Red data book. Migration. Recycling of paper. Reforestation. Finally, we will be discussing some questions and answers for revising the chapter. So, without any delay, let's get started. Deforestation and its causes. Forests are essential for the well being and survival of the organisms. Clearing of forests. And using that land for other purposes is called deforestation. Deforestation stays as a major threat to the survival of organisms. Deforestation is carried out by man for either of the following purposes procuring land for cultivation, building houses and factories, making furniture, or using wood as fuel. Sometimes, deforestation occurs due to natural causes like Forest fires, severe droughts. Consequences of deforestation Deforestation disturbs the balance in nature. It increases the temperature, air pollution, and chances of many natural calamities. We know that plants use carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. Due to deforestation, there will be less number of plants to use the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, thus increasing the amount of carbon dioxide. These carbon dioxide traps the heat rays reflected by Earth and leads to global warming. This disturbs the water cycle, reduces rainfall, causing droughts. Deforestation causes less trees. And we know that fewer number of trees causes soil erosion. Soil erosion will remove the top fertile soil, and exposes the lower layers of soil, which are hard and rocky. It has less humus and fertility. Thus the area will become infertile, and gradually it gets converted into deserts. This process is called desertification. Conservation of Forest and Wildlife Now we understood that we must conserve and protect the forest and wildlife. For the protection of plant and animal life along with their habitats, protected areas are designated, such as Sanctuary National Park Biosphere Reserve Sanctuary these are the areas where animals are protected from any disturbance to them and their habitat. National Park These are the areas reserved for wildlife, where they can freely use the habitat and natural resources. Biosphere Reserve These are large areas of protected land for conservation of wildlife, plant, and animal resources, and also traditional life of the tribals living in the area. In the coming sections, we will learn about these three protected areas in detail. Human activities such as cutting of trees, 
cultivation, plantation, hunting, etc., are prohibited in these areas in order to conserve the forest and wildlife, with government rules methods and policies. Government agents and society take special efforts to protect the forest and animals. Biosphere Reserve A variety of plants, animals, and microorganisms generally found in an area is called the biodiversity. The areas meant for conservation of biodiversity are called biosphere reserve. As we learned before, the biosphere reserves helps to maintain the biodiversity and culture of that area. Sometimes, other protected areas such as sanctuary and national park are also included in a biosphere reserve. Flora and Fauna some animals and plants typically belong to a particular area. The plants and animals found in a particular area are called flora and fauna of that area. These plants and animals can usually grow only in one particular environment or region. So, if we try to move them to other region, it may die or become unhealthy. Endemic species a group of population, which are capable of interbreeding is called a species. Members of a species have common characteristics, and can reproduce fertile offspring with the members of their own species. Some species of plants and animals are found exclusively only in one particular region. Endemic species are those species of plants and animals, which are found exclusively in a particular area. Naturally. These endemic species are not seen anywhere else other than a particular region. A particular type, or species of a plant, or animal may be endemic to a zone, or a state, or a country. So, if a species of plant or animal is endemic to a country, then it will not be seen anywhere else in the world naturally. In danger to endemic species and their natural habitat may occur, because of the following. Destruction of their habitat Increasing human population Introduction of new species Wildlife sanctuary Like forests, wildlife sanctuaries provide protection and suitable living conditions to wild animals. Killing and capturing of animals is strictly prohibited in wildlife sanctuaries. These days, even the protected forests are not safe, because the people living in the neighborhood sometimes intrude inside these forests, and destroys it. National Park Plants, animals, and microorganisms in an area, along with non-living components such as climate, soil, river, deltas, etc., constitutes an ecosystem. National parks are large and diverse enough to protect whole sets of ecosystems. National parks preserve or protect flora, fauna, landscape, and historic objects of an area. Some national parks contain rock shelters built and lived by prehistoric humans. Also, many tribals are still living in the areas of some national parks. Tiger is one of the many species which are slowly disappearing from our forests. To ensure the survival and maintenance of the tiger population in the country, government has launched a project called, Project Tiger. Survival of some animals has become difficult because of disturbances in their natural habitat. Small animals are in much more danger of becoming extinct than the bigger animals. Because, humans kills frogs, snakes. Lizards, owls, etc. ruthlessly without realizing their importance in the ecosystem. These animals are small in size, but their importance in ecosystem cannot be ignored, as they are part of food chains and food webs. Killing these animals ruthlessly will affect the food chain and food web, eventually affecting ecosystem, thereby humans too. Protected areas like sanctuaries, national parks and biosphere reserves are conserving these animals and plants, 
by prevention of human actions mostly in these areas. Red Data Book It is very important for us to keep a track on the endangered animals and plants. The source book which keeps a record of all the endangered animals and plants is called Red Data Book. The Red Data Book helps us to conserve or protect the endangered species. There are different Red Data Books for plants, animals, and other species. Migration Some birds fly to faraway areas every year during a particular time because of climatic changes. They fly for laying eggs, as the weather in their natural habitat becomes very cold and inhospitable. Birds who cover long distances to reach another land are known as migratory birds. Recycling of paper We use paper to write, draw, and even for other purposes like covering and cleaning. These papers are made from trees. So, manufacturing of paper causes cutting of trees, hence it is considered as a major cause of deforestation. It takes around 17 full-grown trees to make one ton of paper. So, we must prevent the manufacturing of papers by reducing its usage, reusing, and recycling the papers as much as we could. A paper can be recycled five to seven times for use, thus reducing the usage of new papers. We must save, reuse the used paper, and recycle it to save the trees. By doing so, we save not only trees, but also reduce the amount of chemicals used for the manufacturing of papers. Reforestation Now we know, reducing, reusing, and recycling of papers will reduce deforestation. But this is not a permanent solution, as the use of paper is ever increasing. The only practical solution for deforestation is, reforestation. Restocking of the destroyed forests by planting new trees is called reforestation. The planted trees should be generally of the same species of the trees found in that forest. If the deforested area is left undisturbed, it re-establishes itself. This is a natural process, and is called natural reforestation. But this process is quite slow, and will take very long. As we humans have already caused tremendous damage to our forests, planting more trees is the only option to retain our green wealth for the future generation. In India, we have the Forest Conservation Act. This act is aimed at the preservation and conservation of natural forests, and meeting the basic needs of the people living in, or near the forests. It's time for revision of the chapter. Welcome to question and answer session. Don't forget to subscribe and share for updates. Before answering, think for 5 seconds. Question 1. Fill in the blanks. A place where animals are protected in their natural habitat is called. Wildlife Sanctuary Species found only in a particular area is known as Endemic Species Migratory birds fly to faraway places because of dash changes Climatic Question 2 Differentiate between the following Wildlife Sanctuary and Biosphere Reserve Wildlife Sanctuary is the area protected for animals, where animals can live in their natural habitat. Killing and capturing of animals is strictly prohibited in wildlife sanctuaries, and also other human activities like farming, cutting of trees, etc. 
Biosphere Reserve is an area conserved to protect the biodiversity and culture of that area. Biosphere Reserve consists of many protected areas like sanctuaries, national parks, mountains, lakes, etc. Zoo and Wildlife Sanctuary Zoo is a place where animals live in artificial habitat. Wildlife sanctuary is a place where animals live in their natural habitat. In zoo, the animals are protected for public view and are spread in small areas. In wildlife sanctuary, animals are protected and conserved in very large areas. Endangered and extinct species The species which are at the verge of extinction, and are required to be protected and conserved are called endangered species. Example, tiger, wild buffalo, etc. The species which no more exist on the earth, are called extinct species. Example, dinosaurs. Flora and Fauna All plant life occurring in an area is called flora. Example, sal, teak, mango, jamun, etc. All animal life occurring in an area is called fauna. Example, leopard, wild dog, wolf, etc. Question 3. Discuss the effects of deforestation on the following. Wild animals. Due to deforestation, the natural habitat of wild animals are destroyed. Without their natural habitat, the animals are left with no place to live and breed. Because of this many animals are at the verge of extinction. Environment Carbon dioxide consumption by plants is reduced because of deforestation. This has resulted in global warming. Due to this, our ecosystem is adversely affected. Villages, Rural Areas People living in rural areas depends on forest largely for fuel, fruits, etc. Deforestation has reduced their resources. The animals who lost their natural habitat due to deforestation, are also a danger to the rural people. Cities or urban areas Though there is no direct effect on the cities with deforestation, the changes in climatic conditions due to deforestation causes flood and droughts and affects cities also. Global warming due to deforestation affects urban areas like others. Earth Due to deforestation, fertile lands became deserts. Climate of Earth has been changed due to deforestation and causes flood and droughts too. The Next Generation Global warming due to deforestation will affect the next generation adversely. Fuel and paper will not be produced sufficiently. Many species will be extinct, and many beautiful sites will be destroyed before the next generation could see it. Question 4. What will happen if we go on cutting trees? Rainfall and fertility of soil decreases, and natural calamities will increase due to change in climate. The water holding capacity of soil will be decreased, and causes floods. Eventually it affects animal life too. The habitat of an animal is disturbed.
the survival of animals will become difficult, if their natural habitat is disturbed. They will not have any space to live and breed. Also, because of scarcity of food, animals will start to wander into nearby villages, and hunt the domestic animals and sometimes humans too as their prey. The top layer of soil is exposed. If the top layer of soil is exposed, then it will be washed away with the water. The removal of top layer will gradually convert the fertile land into deserts. Moreover, the soil washed away with water will be deposited in the riverbed, resulting in decreasing the depth of rivers. The chances of floods will increase many fold. Question 5. Answer in brief. Why should we conserve biodiversity? We should conserve biodiversity because, it is very important for all living organisms and for the environment. We should conserve biodiversity to save it from becoming extinct for ourselves and future generations. Protected forests are also not completely safe for wild animals. Why? Protected forests are not completely safe for wild animals, because poachers have found access in these areas, and captures or kills the animals. The rules should be more strong, and patrolling should be more vigilant. Some tribals depend on the jungle. How? Some tribals are still living inside the forests and its premises. They depend on the jungle for food, fuel, wood, shelter, etc. What are the causes and consequences of deforestation? The main cause of deforestation is growing urbanization and industrialization. Need for more land and resources have led to the cutting down of forests. The consequences of deforestation are natural calamities. It has also rendered many species of plants and animals unprotected and unconserved. What is Red Data Book? It is very important for us to keep a track on the endangered animals and plants. The source book which keeps a record of all the endangered animals and plants is called Red Data Book. There are different Red Data Books for plants, animals, and other species. What do you understand by the term migration? Some species of birds and animals move from their habitat to some other habitat, for the purpose of breeding and survival. Birds who cover long distances to reach another land are known as migratory birds. And now this process is called migration. Question 6. In order to meet the ever-increasing demand in factories and for shelter, trees are being continually cut. Is it justified to cut trees for such projects? Discuss and prepare a brief report. The ever-increasing demand in factories and for shelters, trees are being continually cut. If we have to retain our green wealth for generations, plantation of more trees is the only option. Cutting of trees can be only justified when restoration is done. Reforest Station is the restocking of destroyed forests by planting new trees. The trees planted should be of the same species that are generally found in the forests. We should plant as many trees as we cut. Reforestation can take place naturally also if the land is left undisturbed. The forests will establish itself over a period of time. We have damaged our forests to such an extent that it is difficult to retain the green wealth for our future generations. So it is very important to plant more trees and to find out ways of recycling.
and restoring our natural wealth. Question 7. How can you contribute to the maintenance of green wealth of your locality? Make a list of actions to be taken by you. The green wealth of the locality is the responsibility of every resident. We should grow more and more plants in the locality. The residents should work together to conserve the green belt of the locality. Also they should be taught about the consequences of deforestation and global warming. I plant trees in my locality. I also teach the small children and encourage the slogan, One man one tree every year, so that every resident plants at least one tree in a year and takes care of it. Question 8. Explain how deforestation leads to reduced rainfall. Plants need carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. Fewer trees would mean that less carbon dioxide will be used up, resulting in its increased amount in the atmosphere. This will lead to global warming, as carbon dioxide traps the heat rays reflected by the Earth. The increase in temperature on the Earth disturbs the water cycle, and may reduce rainfall. Question 9 Find out about national parks in your state. Identify and show their location on the outline map of India. This answer depends on your state in India. Question 10. Why should paper be saved? Prepare a list of ways by which you can save paper. Paper is used in our day-to-day -day life. Thousands of trees are cut to fulfill the demand of paper. If the trees are being cut for paper, there may be one day we will be left with no trees. So paper should be saved and should be used intelligently. The ways by which we can save paper are We should recycle the waste paper. We should not litter paper here and there. Paper should be sent through proper channel for recycling. We should not tear our old books and donate it to poor children so that they can reuse those books. We should encourage buying recycled paper products. We should avoid taking paper bags from the shops. Instead we should carry jute bags. Question 11. Complete the word puzzle.